welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have returning guest Josh from Cutthroat Comics. Josh, what do you got going on this time? Oh, well, you know, I'm kind of making rounds for the uh, the next Turkey Sharks Kickstarter. Uh, this is issue four. So it's actually the the furthest I've made it on any uh, comic run because we just did uh, three issue runs of the other one. So now we're on four of this one, planning on uh, continuing this one for a while. I don't know, you know, 300 issues. I don't know. But right now we're at four. There you go. It's going to be a long time. you got to try to beat the spawn run now. Right, so, yeah. I don't see that happening, but you never know. Yeah. Hey, look, Dave Sim ran 301 <laughs> issues. So, yeah. People forget that. Yeah. So that was the one thing that threw me. When they hit the 301, they're like, the record breaking. And I'm like, no, because uh, Cerberus did zero to 300. Oh, okay. So it's 301 issues. Right. So, uh, he's way over that now, though, I think. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm a dork and I remember that stuff. <laughs> so what, what's going on with Turkey Sharks? Uh, you know, just a bunch of silliness, more or less. Um, I'm trying to even remember. I'm, I'm editing it right now, so we're about to go to color. Uh, you know, we got one, two, three new characters. Um, another character returns and becomes a new character, as happens in comics. Uh, somebody's getting married. Somebody maybe loses their powers forever. I mean, it's just a lot of dumbness, really. There's a lot going on in one issue of a comic. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's what's their average uh, page rate uh, page uh, count on on your on uh, Turkey Sharks? Uh, I do just the minimum, so it's it's 23 pages plus a credits page, and then four covers, you know, outside and interior. So. Okay. Whatever that is, 28 or whatever that is, adds up to. So Yeah, because uh, some people go go crazy with it, and other people are like, yep. 12 issues, 12, 12 pages? Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so, yeah, 24 is the minimum that you can print, at least through the company I do it through. So I just kind of I just go with the minimum, you know, and if I were to need to go over, I would, but I try to just make it that because, I mean, it's, it's expensive to make. You know, you're looking at $3,000, uh, per comic with the art and everything. So, oh, and what's a, what's the run on that? Three thousand, four thousand books. Um, I honestly don't even really, except for the variant covers. Like, I just kind of print until I'm done with it. So, like Ginger Avenger, we've got forty six or forty seven copies of one, two, and three left, and I'm only selling them as a set. But I haven't kept count of how many we've sold, really. So, probably should, I suppose, but you know. Yeah, you need you need to keep that math there. So when when you yeah. do upgrade, you can take your math and go look. This book puts out this much. Yep. 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 Um, I, mean, I, I know which ones sell quicker than others, but you know, yeah. just as it is. They, 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 the uh, for some reason people want want to know numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now with with turkey sharks ongoing, uh, which with uh, when does your Indiegogo start? Uh, start. It's a Kickstarter, yeah. yeah. Uh, June seventh through July seventh. So, okay. okay. We've got uh, how many covers? We got four covers this time, I think, something like that. Um, I don't. Have you seen the uh, when the Power Rangers do the helmet covers where they got their helmet off? Yep. We got two of those. Um, the A cover, and then Tyler Haddix is back doing a cover for issue four as well. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what do you got going on with the uh, uh, Kickstarter? You got any, uh, you know, pledge bonuses and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I. This is what this is the fourth one I've done, third or fourth. Mm -hmm. I don't go too crazy like a lot of people. Uh, you know, with all the stretch goals and bonuses and all that. Mine mm -hmm. are pretty pretty basic. You know, you get your comics. I bundle them together. Uh, the variants you get for cheaper through my Kickstarter because. The variant covers, which are usually around 200 print runs, something like that. Um, when I sell them at cons and stuff, and on the website they're 10 bucks. On the Kickstarters, I sell them for eight, and then and, and I do bundles together. If you get all all four or five covers, you know it's a discounted price too. So you have the one regular cover and the four variants, right? Uh, I think it's one one A cover and three for this one. I think we had four for the last one. 
Okay. I was thinking thing. that. Yeah. It's a lot to remember. It's a lot to carry around. That's kind of why I'm like, man. I, I, I couldn't imagine dragging, taking all that. I mean, I, I drag a, an entire van full of books with me right. everywhere I go. And when you got to take your own books. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard to even remember. Like I got a, I got uh, Pittsburgh next week for uh, Three Rivers Con. I got to go through and make sure I've got all the variants bagged and boarded and have enough inventory with me to, you know, not run out and stuff. So, you ever had to ever had to drop ship your own books to you at a convention? No, no, I've never had to do that. Not yet. Maybe one day. Fingers crossed. It's a good problem to have. I think. Oh yeah, I uh, I've seen I've seen a few people do that. They didn't take enough stuff. They sold out first day. They had to get drop ship their own stuff from or you know overnight it so they can have stuff for the second day right yeah yeah i've, I've thought about you know in the future if that happens or something but i think i'll probably be good at, good at i think I've, I've sold out of things a few times but you know i don't do the cons that are like a week long i just do one or two days typically so yeah i i i don't know if i could ever do a, like one of the four day ones two days i remember doing two days and those are rough man yeah, I think, i'm trying to remember if i've ever done a three day i feel like i have yeah, I think I've done like a Friday, Saturday, or like a half Friday, then a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, it gets long, and just like just like now, you lose your voice from talking to people. And you, and I hate to say this, but you almost always come back from it sick. Yeah, you get, you have, you're around all those people for the entire weekend. So. Yeah, I've, I've gotten pretty good at avoiding that. Like I, after every customer, I've got hand sanitizer. Like as soon as they walk away and they're not looking, I'm like, oh, yep, I want your cooties. I got, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a little bag I keep on my hip. It's like a military style when it goes in my belt. I keep my stuff in it, like my glasses and my, and what. Man, I got my bottle of hand sanitizer and it's like pop. Yeah, <laughs> it's like because <laughs> yeah, it's bad because it. you know you think we would gotten used to this by now because we were dealing with con crud way before COVID. Yeah, and yet here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's gotten a lot better. I I think only ever every now and again does it hit me now, but. Yeah. Well, when, when all this hit right before this, so this is maybe the end of 2018. I was always carrying hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. but about 2018, I started using it after every transaction. And I'm like, man, I, I got sick like once that yep. entire year. And I'm like, oh man, maybe that's a, maybe that's what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to, it's uh, you know, sometimes you forget if it's busy enough, you forget to do it but in between, but yeah, it helps for sure. Yep. Now, uh, uh, you got any of your uh, regular prose novels that you're working on right now? Uh, I've been trying. So I'm, I'm getting ready to start the third Hellscape book. <clears throat> but to do that, I had to go through and read and take notes on the first two. So I've been trying to do that. But with every, I mean, it's been like uh, I told you earlier, I was about to take a nap. And I expected to take like 10, 15 minutes. It ended up being two hours. So I was like, man, I've been been pushing real hard on everything recently. Um, <clears throat> on top of being sick or whatever, but yeah, I'm, I'm almost done reading the second book. I've got my notes are right here next to me on what I want to do with the third book and stuff. So it's, it's coming along. I'm hoping to start it. I don't know. I might wait till I get back from Pittsburgh. Maybe I'm not sure. We'll see. See how I'm feeling. Yeah. Pittsburgh is, uh, it's, that's, uh, where are you at right now? I, I'm sorry. I forget where you're, where you're uh, at. Finley, based out of Finley. Finley. That's, yeah. And uh, man, that'd be a hell of a drive all the way from Fenley to Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. I'll probably get up, uh, probably get up at like three a.m. and head that way on uh, what next Saturday morning, I guess. I'll do the con. I'll go to the hotel, do the con Sunday, and then drive back. So, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be rough, but I'll be all right. I remember the good old days of Pittsburgh Comic Con. So, yeah, yeah, I haven't. This is Three Rivers Comic Con. I've never done this one, but. Should be pretty cool. There's some pretty good guests there. And uh, I know Matt Horick, who did uh, Stingray 2 cover, he works for Marvel. He's going to be there. So he and I haven't been in the same spot since Jim uh, City, like two years ago, I think. So that'll be cool. We'll do a little double signing there. And uh, I've, got, I've got some books that I'm going to, after I get off with you, I'm going to clean them up and get them pressed and graded and stuff and throw them on eBay and make some money off of them. So, yeah. I'm uh I, I got a, I got a guy got a hold of me the other day and of course he well he got a hold of me Saturday and I'm like man I'm not gonna be here I'm only gonna be here half a day today and he's like I got a bunch of key Spider Man and he sends me a picture of them and I'm like oh, oh I want all those mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like three of them are graded. I'm like, ah, all right, we'll see how this goes. So one thing, so I, I have to ask you though, um, because I've ran into this and you're selling graded books on, on eBay. I have just had, started, just started doing that. So, okay, man, I've had people argue with the grade on eBay. Oh yeah. It's like, I didn't grade it. Yeah. You know, I got, I had a, <laughs> I sent an, I had a nine, eight, something's killing the children mm -hmm. and the guy bought it and then sent it back to us. He goes, yeah, that's not nine, eight. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> like, it's graded a 980s now. It's not look here, 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 here. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. So I end up eating and having to sit on that for a little bit longer to move it. So I was like, yeah, that's a good right. book to have right now. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. when I got it graded, it was $1,600. And by the time it finally sold, it was $600. It oh. dropped $1,000 in like six months. Oh, that sucks. I was like, but It'll go back up though. It'll go back up. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's long gone. I've got I've got more. I'd have to dig through my own personal stuff to find them, but I know I have at least one more. Yeah. Because now, uh, you know, I I see you're great in your own stuff though. That's that's cool. Yeah, right? my books. Yeah, the Cutthroat Comic Books. Those are pretty cool. I've got a few of those for sale too. Generally, what I do when I write any of my novels or any of my books the first copy that comes out of the box is mine. <laughs> so the books that I have graded um, that are mine are one, like the very first book, uh, also signed and stuff. Um, but yeah, and I've started buying like small collections from people and, and flipping those and stuff too. And that's mostly what I'm going to get graded at. Uh, Three Rivers is like some Star Wars books and said so they'll all be for sale. So I'm trying to make a little extra money on the side by doing that since I'm in the position where I'm, you know, coming across those things fairly often. So, yeah. Um, so I, I got to ask with I, somebody pointed that out. Now I now I now I now I catch myself doing it all the time. So I have to ask. I did not know I said that as much as I do until somebody pointed it out, like in one of the last episodes. Sorry. <laughs> well, what was but, that? Huh. It's one of the things is that you don't realize you do something until somebody points it out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. When you're going over to Three Rivers um, with with your books and stuff like that, do um, you take get your artist to sign stuff to you, or do you just take in what you have with you? Yeah, usually just if they're there. Like, uh, okay. you know, I, I will sign books when people <laughs> buy them and stuff, obviously. Uh, but, you know, anytime I have a chance, like, if any of my artists that worked on the book are going to be there, I try to promote double signings or triple signings or what you know whatever it is you know it, i i find that that honestly helps sales so if anybody's yeah. listening out there that is an indie book creator like try to get your art team at the same spot and don't act like it's not a big deal because it is a big deal people people that buy those books and stuff when you're standing there and there's two of you and you're like we're only together once a year they'll probably buy it and get both of you to sign it yep well it, it's one of the things that i've discovered with uh, um indie books is in some markets like our market it's really hard to move indie books mm -hmm. if the artist or the writer isn't isn't there yep. as soon as the writer or the artist are there with the book they'll sell out yep. but it's just you got to have the guy there and especially if you got both of them holy crap they, yep. they jump on that big time so yep i've definitely noticed you know now that my company's getting a little bit bigger and I'm able to, you know, have another guy, you know, either he or she just happens to be there or I invite them along at my table. Like I've definitely noticed, like the first time we did your con uh, down there in Piqua, when Justin came with me, we had a line at our table a couple of times throughout the day. So it was like, wow, that was crazy. Yeah. It, it's you guys. I, I don't, I don't know how well you guys did, but man, walking by your table, you always had somebody at your tables. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but both times. So Justin and I are both pretty good at getting people to stop and take a look at least. You know, we we always talk about it's a fine line between being, you know, just a guy behind a table and a carny caller. Like you just want to find that. You got to catch them, catch the people walking by. As soon as they look and lock eyes with something, you're like, yo, what are you looking at? Come take a look. You know, yeah. I don't really yell at them like, hey, you know, come over here, skinny, you know, or anything like that. 
it's it's, it's all shameless self promotion, man. It, it okay. is. It's it's, and and it does walk that fine line between being almost annoying about it mm -hmm. to being, you know, like perceptive. You notice the guy, you get them, you yeah. go, hey man, what, what what kind of books you like? You know, whatever. And people are like, oh well, then you'll dig this book right here. You know, yeah. this is kind of in that vein. This is over here. You know, yeah. you like horror comics, man. We got a horror book over here. You know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and, we should have our second horror book. It should be coming out pretty soon. Though. I'm not sure. What's going on with that? They're they're trying to get it done. I know that much. It takes time. Do you do you put hard set deadlines on your um, on your teams? No, not at this point. I don't even have hard set deadlines on myself right now. So it's just, <coughs> you know, if I were doing this as my full time job and I didn't have a day job still, like yeah, probably, you know. But it's right now, it's still pretty fluid. You know, I don't have. People that read our stuff aren't messaging me like, yo, you said this was going to be out, you know. So if, if that happens, then maybe we'll talk about that. But right now, it's just everybody's everybody's busy doing their, their lives with their kids and day jobs and stuff. You know, if we get to where this is this is the thing, then, yeah, we'll get a little more uh, professional about it, I suppose. But, I, you know, I think Cutthroat Comics in general pumps out stuff a lot quicker than most other indie publishers, I think. So, cool. You know, you I, I see you guys every show. You got at least one new book. It seems that's that's kind of about well, not not every show, but every at least every three four months. I try to have yeah, something yeah. New, so, well, yeah. It, I, that I've noticed. I'm not with you at every yeah. show, but right, right. You know, it, it's it's very cool that you guys do that because you know I've been going to con since I'm forty, going to be forty nine next month. I started at fifteen. Okay. So, and you know, you saw those guys that had every show, you know, they might put out a book every two years or something mm -hmm. like that, if they're lucky. Yep. And, you know, they're always at the show. They're always got their table there. They always have like the same three books. And I kind of feel bad for them because, you know, at a certain point, you know, people just walk by and they're like, hey, I got that. And they walk on. Yep. But I also don't because I'm like, yeah, I got to put out something new. Yep. Yeah, the first con I ever did, <clears throat> I had Stingray 1, I had my first novel, Stuff Scrolls and Porcelain Angels, and I had Judy and her Blue Cape, and I think I had a couple t-shirts. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. The guy next to me is kind of is now kind of a buddy of mine, and he told me, he's like, dude, every time you do a con, you need to have something new. And I kind of took that to heart, so, I mean, we try, but I have noticed, and, and I tell my guys, you know, that work on my other projects and stuff that I publish for, like, you know, you're going to come out with one book and it's going to sell probably. But when you get two or three or four, that's when people are going to start buying the whole runs and stuff. You're going to make more more sales and stuff because it's, you know, when fans look at that, they, you know, they don't want to wait a year to read the next issue. They want to buy three or four at a time. So, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was going through some books a while back, uh, putting my stuff in the computer, battery bag and board and stuff and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm finding these, these indie books that I bought at cons and it's like one issue, maybe mm -hmm. two, yep. then you never hear from the guys again. You, you never see them again. Or if you do see them, they don't have anything to do with that book anymore. Yep. And you're just like, you don't nothing, nothing. Okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of it too, as, as a fan myself, you know, I look around, I, I look at the quality of, of the work that's on whoever's table, and then I start thinking to myself, you know, if I buy this guy or girl's book or whatever, are they even going to be around? Or are they going to, you know, is their work oh, yeah. good enough that, you know, I'm going to be able to watch them succeed? And, yeah. You know, fans are investing. I say this all the time. They're not, they're buying your work, but they're also buying you. Yeah. Um, so they have to believe that you're going to be somebody that they should care about in the future. So, yep. Well, and it, it's it's a shame because, man, I, I've seen so many really good artists, really good writers put out really good books, maybe one, two issues, and then they they start infighting or something happens or whatever, and then they'll bring in somebody in maybe in for the third book, and it's just a guy that they got because they could afford this guy because he was you know doing ten dollar pages or whatever. And you're just like, oh, okay, never mind then. And you're just like, oh, I'm done. And it's, you yeah. know, um, and and I'm I'm, I'm going to feel bad because I can't remember this dude's name at all. 
<clears throat> but there's one guy who used to always be set up over in Indiana. Every show I did over there back in the day, because we did every Indianapolis show at one point, and he'd have this huge display, all this stuff set up. He had this really nice book. The cover was phenomenal. And then you open it up, and the artwork looked like a you know a five year old did it because he spent yeah. all of his money to yeah. get this. I want to say he had a big name artist do the cover, and then he did then he did the interiors and and he had a big display, had the 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 cover made into a standy, all this stuff like that. And we're just sitting there and we're like, oh, you know what? I looked at the cover; it was like a like a Spawn esque looking character, and I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. Okay. And um I think I got busy and I never was able to get back to his table and then the next show I was at and I was like, Oh, he's there again. It's the same book. All right. And I looked through it, I'm like, hmm, okay. I'm like, how much is this? And mind you, this is like ninety three, ninety four maybe. Okay, thirty years. And it was ago. like ten bucks for yeah. a book back then. I'm like, Ooh, yeah. What the hell, man? I was like, if it would have been five bucks, I probably would have just bought it. Yeah, but you're like, mm, mm, nah, <clears throat> ten bucks yeah. in 1994 was. That's a lot for a comic. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, you know, it's it's a tough business, and <clears throat> I, I see people now that sell their books for ten, fourteen dollars, and when I see that, I often wonder. It's like, okay, how many pages is it? And you look at it, and it's just the minimum twenty four pages. It's like, well, I mean, if you're getting that, then. All the more power to you. I'm not gonna be mad at you, but you know our books are five, our variants are ten. I, for me, it's as much as I want to do this as my day job. I'm like I'm not trying to make a million dollars off ten books. I'd rather make a million dollars off a million books. You know. Yep. <clears throat> well, one of one of the cool things that I've noticed some people do is okay, your book's a five dollar cover price book, <clears throat> and say you have your artist with you. And you both sign it. He puts a little quick sketch, like maybe a head or something like that. Ten bucks, you know, and they sell like mad, even though it's a little tiny little two by two, yep. you know, done. And, um, you know, sells a hundred times better than nothing. Yep. But, you know, you throw that extra five bucks in there, takes two seconds. You make an extra five bucks per book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm about to start doing, uh, <clears throat> I think for the Kickstarter, there's going to be COAs that will unlock as a stretch goal. Mm -hmm. um, but then I think I'm also going to start offering them like an extra dollar. You know, here's a COA. I just show that I signed it and stuff. I don't know, just a little something extra, just to make a little bit, just that little bit extra, you know. So. It's all it takes, man, is, is yep. you know, if, mm -hmm. if, you know, 100 people buy a $5 book, you know, you make five hundred bucks, but five hundred people buy a six dollar book. Yeah, yeah, that's an extra hundred bucks. Um, you know, and and like I said, you guys always got new material coming out. You've got enough books, you know. So even if you, you know, okay, you're doing Three Rivers. Next time you go to Three Rivers next year, you're probably gonna have two different, two more books. Oh, at least uh, you, probably three or four by that time, honestly. Yeah, yeah. but I'm saying is, is that, that you guys, you know, you're talking about not, not having a book every con, but thing is, the guys yeah. from Three Rivers are coming to Dayton. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> so even if you have the exact same books at Three Rivers that you have at Gem City in, yep. what, six weeks, seven weeks? Uh, Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so if you have the same, yep. they're not going to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and we've got, I guess I forgot to mention, the next, so after Turkey Sharks, the next comic I'm working on, I expect to jump pretty big for us. So my best-selling book is that Cocaine Stripper Stronghold, and so now we're doing a prequel comic book series of that, so it'll be four issues, and it, I've written it, um, it's off to the artist. Um, but we haven't quite started on it yet because I'm going to pitch to some bigger companies and see if somebody will pick it up. But uh, if nobody does, I'm just going to do it myself. But I expect that book to be huge. Like the kick, if we end up doing a Kickstarter for that, I expect it to be a monster because the book itself just flies off my table so fast. So I think a lot of people are getting pretty excited about that, and it, it turned out really funny so far. So, but <clears throat> I know this is bad. A question to ask. 
if you do get a bigger company to pick it up, you know, are you going to, could you lose money essentially? Because, you know, Probably. since you're doing it yourself, Probably. it's all your money. Yep. In yeah. the big, in the big picture over 10 years, maybe, maybe, but I'm looking at, you know, I'm still trying to grow my brand and myself. So I'm looking, you know, I'm kind of weighing it. If I can get a bigger company to pick me up and then I start getting free tables at cons, I start getting more notoriety, more people care about who I am and all, and therefore who my company is and who the people that I publish for. I mean, it's a trickle down effect, uh, not as far as economics, but as far as notoriety and getting people to come to our tables. So it's kind of a, what's good for the goose is good for the gander type of situation. That's why I try to get my guys to <clears throat> understand when they work for me, like you know, what, what's that uh, high tide raises all ships or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I, I explained to them, you know, the, the better this company does, the better I do, the better you guys do and vice versa. The better you guys do, I get more exposure. It's just, it's all helping each other out. Kind of like a, almost like a family thing, but um <clears throat> Go you ahead. know, with, with some of these companies, I know that, um, was it Scout, Black Mask, Stun Them, Black Caravan? They mm -hmm. have, like, okay, Scout has Scout, then it has, like, Scout Junior or something like that. And it has, like, Scoot, Scoot or something like that. Yeah. Think. It has yeah. subs, you know, underneath that. <laughs> so, man, would you ever try for something like that if Black Mask or something could pick you up and just be like Black Mask Presents Cutthroat Comics or something like that? Would you ever? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm honestly, I'm open to any idea, whether I go along with it or not, I'll listen to it. Um, and I, yeah, I'd be, and that's something too, like if, a, if a, another company does pick up this book, uh, one of the things I will at least suggest is that, you know, we do, you know, S Scout presents Cutthroat Comics, you know, cut the, uh, Cocaine Stripper Stronghold or something like that, jointly publish it. So I think that's what like... Uh, like image does right because it's got um yeah because you got skybound yeah each of them has their own imprint the shadow line image. Yeah, yeah yeah you got yeah so something like that would be cool but if they were like you know here's an extra i don't know 10 grand to not do that okay cool i'll take that 10 grand you know so well you know just hypothetical it's uh we'll, we'll see what happens with it you know yeah more or less your son's having a blast back there behind you. Yeah, yeah, he's bored. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's upstairs. If not, he'd be running around behind me right now, too. Yeah. So. yeah, he got to play video games for two hours while I took a nap, so I think he's pretty happy. Ah. My, that's when mine, he was mad because I ran him off because the, he plays video games literally in this chair. Yeah. So <laughs> he's like, dude, you cannot play video games while I'm recording. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> uh, now, with doing comics and and do you think they would like you know if you could get somebody to pick up your prequel series would you try to get them to do maybe a trade paperback of uh cocaine stripper uh i mean maybe at some point because like i said it's four issues so like my plan right now with ginger avenger is once the once the 47 copies are gone like i'm gonna make it a trade and then i'm gonna add in like some behind the scenes stuff, like some character designs, maybe even a page where I talk about like, this is where the idea came from. And this is, or, or maybe even some, <clears throat> some Easter egg, like stuff like, you know, when this character says this, that's what I was talking about, or, you know, stuff like that, add some stuff to it. And then I'll have that as well. That way I can still continue making money off the art and the story that I put so much time and money into, you know, I'm not just going to let it go. I, you know, I haven't quite, you know, made my money back on those probably, you know, cause what three issues, $9,000. I probably haven't made $9,000 back off of half of, uh, off of those three books probably, but I just can't, I, we have so much product now. I can't carry everything anymore, honestly. And I don't have room on my tables anymore too. I'm in, I'm in like a weird position where I need to be buying corner tables and bigger tables, but we're not quite making enough money to justify it. So it's kind of like, you know, you gotta make decisions. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. Sneak that, sneak that, sneak that little table with you. Sneak out. I have a little like four foot table I take with me to all cons, man. Because sometimes if you if you're if you're in a good spot, you just doop, put that right up there and L it. Yep. Yeah. And most most places don't 
won't say anything about it because yeah. you know, as long as it's in your space, you're fine. Right. But every once in a while, you'll get somebody kind of grumble about it. But yeah, yeah, I've had uh, bigger tables a couple times, corner spots, and it seems to work out pretty well. So yeah, have you thought about doing like uh, a blank covers or anything like that? Uh, thought about it. Yes. Will I? I mean, maybe at some point. Um, you know, if like one of my artists or something, like like if Tyler or somebody was like, "Hey, man, print up twenty five blanks or something for me," I would probably maybe do it. Probably. Yeah. You know. Now I know back in the day because they don't they don't even do it anymore. This is bad. I forgot this. Um, I know back in the day some places did. You know, you'd get the full book here, and then you get like a little square. Oh yeah, yeah. Just blank, but it was yeah. the only problem is, is that about the only thing you could draw on it with was with a sharpie. Is it, you know, pencils did not want to draw on it or nothing like that. But yeah. it's good for a yeah. remark. So you put your like little head of your character in the in the corner or something like that. Yeah, it's and I, the, you know they got the metal covers and foil covers. Like it's all it's all stuff I want to do. I just I, I need to feel you know like we're moving in the right direction to to throw money at those types of things. So. It, it is getting there. I mean, the company's come a long way, even just in the last couple of years since since I've met you and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've definitely, you know, I had that one shop, ass. one shop down in North Carolina, just ordered sixty books. So it's like that's what I was doing before. Uh, before this, I was bagging, boarding, and signing those books, trying to get them ready. So <laughs> yeah. So, but it, it's 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 fun watching you grow. You know, I, I mean, I've I've only been here for a couple of years, but I've seen you guys just, you know, ex, you know, almost doubling. It seems like every time I see you, you've got almost yeah. twice as much stuff as you did before. It feels like that. That's for sure. Yeah. And uh, man, you you, I, I have all kinds of respect for you, man. Full time, yeah. regular job, you know, writing, working, putting all your books together, you know buying collections and selling stuff and yeah. making money on the side you it's, it's uh, how you it's, do it, man it's quite the hustle i mean and that's what you know i tell people all the time is you know you see the end result of of the hard work but you don't see every day i like literally five days a week i will work my day job from uh i get up at 5 40 and i get home maybe a little bit after three and then i work for another three or four hours on 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 my books and all that and and then the collections and all that so it's you know it's 13 14 hours a day five days a week and then even even today i woke up this morning and i was like oh sweet i got a free day and then i was like oh no i got to bag and board all those books oh crap i've got 10 books that i need to get out and clean them before i send them in for grading next week at, at three rivers i was like oh i got to do my exercises oh i got to continue reading hellscape 2 and get some of that done and then here we are it was noon before uh when i messaged you i was like damn i was i was just then getting done with some of that stuff so it's like it's yeah. never ending oh man once, once i get done doing this because i got up this morning jim mow the yard do this uh i'm going to work on some stuff over here for myself then i got to edit tomorrow's show get that ready because you're you're not going to drop tomorrow. You're going to drop uh, the fifth, so that'll still be before your. Um, so we can get that and post credit or post stuff and whatnot. And that's going to be fun because that I'm going to have to probably edit after I do my con. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be worn out. Yep. <laughs> Coming in here, um, take click click taking it off. So. And and people don't realize, man, you're you're dri you're traveling and driving. It's not like you're flying anywhere, man. That takes a yeah. lot out of you too. Holy crap, man! Being on the road sucks. Yeah, I did that Louisville Comic Con uh, a couple months ago, and I got up at four a.m. I drove down to Louisville, did the con, and then I drove right back. So it was four a.m. to like I got home at like nine at night or something like that. I was I was wore out, but you know, it turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. do you? If you're like me, back in the day, I always worried about shows. I still worry about shows, man. I ha I started having freaking almost panic attacks going into shows, going, man, this, I hope this one turns out good, man. What if I go there and I don't make nothing? And how do you, how do you handle that? At that, I'm trying to remember. I want to say maybe once a year does that happen uh, these days. I know when I first started, I want to say it was like the second or third con I did. It was up in Michigan, <clears throat> two-day show, so there was hotel stay. 
<clears throat> the whole weekend I sold one comic book. And uh, that was pretty awful. If ever I was going to quit, that was going to be the time. Um, but, yeah, anymore, I have so much product. I have my pitch down. Like, I know what I'm doing well enough where it just – I don't really have bad shows. I mean, there's some that are better than others, but I always see, I always make gold. Usually. Yeah, see, that's that's not my that's my problem is is that I haven't had a bad show in probably a decade, but still, every show, man, I start having those freaking oh man, mm-hmm. what well, what what's going on? Oh man, there's a a, a a a a Celtic festival, or there's this or this, and I start I start like oh man, is it going to affect my you know? And I'm like. And I get in my own head. Yeah. And that's that's the worst place for me to be is in my own head. Yeah. yeah, what you do is a little bit different than what I do. You know, I, I more rely on my my pitch and my sales abilities. Yours is, you know, if are do, are people going to show up? You know. Yeah. 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 It's a little but it, it, it doesn't even help. Like when I do Jim and Dan shows down in Dayton, or if I set up and do a show, <laughs> man, I always feel like yeah. I, st- I start having that stupid panic attack. Yep. And uh, then I don't sleep. I, I I get about three hours sleep. Get up and go do this show the next day. Yeah, it's one. It was one of the things. Uh, a saying that I read several months ago is uh, "worries are a wish you don't want." So every every time I start worrying about something, I just think of that, and it kind of goes goes away. Wow, that's that's a, I don't know. I've never heard that. that. But that's, yeah, was, uh, that's that makes sense. So heck yeah, it does. Yep. I'm like that. Makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I hate to say this. I'm my own worst enemy. I'll get in my own head. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody asked me for a script I had been working on. I'm like, I don't know where it's at. And then I'm like thinking about it. I was like, did I throw that away? So I get mad at stuff. I'm like, yeah. I'm done. You, and with working on comics and stuff like this, I know I'm, I'm all over the place right now. Do you, do you ever get in your own head and, and basically like, you know, when you're putting stuff together? Uh, no, honestly, I, I hear, I see, you know, cause I've got a lot of writers and stuff on my Facebook feed and, and social medias. And I hear them talk about, you know, doing eight drafts or something or, uh, you know, throwing away stories that turn, didn't turn out how they want. I, I don't know if I'm just super egotistical or, or I'm just that good, but, uh, no, man, I don't – everything I write ends up, you know, even after I do a couple drafts of it, I, it always turns out to be what I want. Um, I'm not short on ideas. Can't say I've ever had writer's block even once. I've been doing this eight years now. So not once have I sat down and been like, I don't know what to do. You know, usually it just comes to me. Yeah. My, mine's, mine is that I get dialogue. Dialogue, just I can write the story. I can come up with yeah. the adventures. I can do all that stuff. But when it comes down to people talking, I, I yeah, don't. that's the hardest part. What I do is <clears throat> so for a novel, for instance, mm-hmm. well, in the comics too, kind of. I will uh, punch up the dialogue as I go through. So, like, <clears throat> you write the whole story. The dialogue you put in just need, needs to be, you know, if you can get it good the first time, cool. But uh, you know, just get what they're supposed to kind of say a generic version. Mm-hmm. When you go back and read it again, <clears throat> now you know how it starts and you know how it ends. So you know where you need that character to be. So you can kind of punch up their dialogue there. And then on your third edit, that's where you really focus in on the character and the dialogue and get that like as good as it can be. You know, give them their voice, you know, if they're Southern or or if they're smart or stupid or whatever they are, you know, manipulate the words to what that character should sound like. That's, that's dialogue's the hardest part. Yeah, it's you know I never really thought about that using using basically basic dialogue as the placeholder, yeah. and then coming up punching up that basic dialogue and making it full yeah. full conversations. Man, mm-hmm. I never really thought about that. Uh, yeah, even even in the comics. <clears throat> so usually, like my script, it will have you know it'll there'll be jokes and stuff for each character or whatever they say. Um, but then when Cristiano sends me the sketch pages. <clears throat> A lot of times you have to change what they say because the way he drew it doesn't look like that's what they're saying. So you can change the line or to keep it current, like how South South Park does, you know, they make a show, you know, in a week leading up to it or whatever they do. Seven days. Yeah. So I will tweak dialogue as I go to make the references and jokes more current. 
So that way, you know, even though it's still going to be six weeks or so before the book comes out after the Kickstarter, at least the jokes are like, oh, I remember that from two weeks ago, you know. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really cool way to do that, yeah. yeah. It's uh, no, I got. I got to. I'm going to ask, wh which do you find easier, writing the comics or writing prose? Mm, it, it's kind of a different animal, really. Um, I can write a comic a lot quicker, obviously. <laughs> um, the books, you know, there's so much more detail. You know, depending on what you're doing, it's it's really kind of about the same, honestly. Uh, you know, a comic though, you know, because 24 pages. And then I won't think about what even happens next. Generally, like I have like kind of an idea about maybe where a character is going to go and maybe some notes on it. But I won't even think about that until I sit down to write the next thing. As we're with books, you know, for four months or whatever it takes to write that book every day, I'm like writing that book. So, yeah, see, when I've written and created characters, I always essentially created a Bible yeah. for, you know, for the book. And so I have like, okay, this is the history of this guy and this is where I want it to go. And this is the history of this guy and where I want it to go. And see, I, I, I would not be able to do what you do with just the, the uh, I'll, I'll figure it out next issue. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, with the comics a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And even with the book sometimes, like in Hellscape 2, uh, <clears throat> which is Concert of Flies, like it, initially I thought it was going to go like one way. And then as I got like halfway through, like, the character I thought was going to be the hero ended up being the villain of the book. So I was, it just kind of made more sense to do that. So it's, it's fun to surprise yourself sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Now I, I'll get, I'll get back to your, to your Kickstarter here. Um, where can people find your Kickstarter? So I think if you look up Turkey sharks <clears throat> one through four on, on Kickstarter, you can, there's like a notify on launch button. You can click that. And when we launch on June 7th, you'll get like an email or something about it. Um, and then, I mean, if you look on any of our socials, uh, I've talked about it, I think on all of them already, just, just seeing the idea that it's going to come out there. So, but uh, yeah, once it's live, I mean, you just go to Kickstarter or any of our social media things and it'll be, it'll be there. All right. And where, where, what, where's your social media is at? Uh, I mean, obviously Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I've been trying to use TikTok a lot more. I, I enjoy that one more than any of them, really, for whatever reason. Uh, we have a Snapchat. I'm trying to move away from the Snapchat because I've always used that as my personal and business. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I get girls add me that are like trying to get me to sign up for their OnlyFans through the Cutthroat Comics account. I was like, this is a business account. Like, can you not send me porn, please? but they don't care. Yeah. I get, I get that a lot. I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, I was like, if I went through and cleaned out my, my uh, Instagram and my Twitter, yeah. I would have no followers. Yeah. It seems like <laughs> <coughs> probably. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, well, man, I don't want to make you talk too much longer because you're, you're sounding rough and, and yeah, I can, yeah, I can tell I it's like going. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. Um, I, I am a fan of your work. Um, your novels, go go find your the prose novels. Go find the comics. Um, you know you'll enjoy them. Um, for people that are out there that have not found them. Um, do do you have a web store? That's one of the other things I forgot to ask. Yeah, yeah. It's a you go to cutthroatcomics.com. It's it's on there. There's a store button. And you can click all the tabs and read about all the books and comics and stuff we have, you know, prior to buying them. Got some promo videos as well. So, all right. Well, like I said, I appreciate you coming on here. I do. And we will get this up. And like I said, on the 5th. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, Turkey Sharks 4 has a variant cover. His character's got his first cover appearance Tornado Nice. Kid. Yep. <laughs> excited about that right yep <laughs> all right Back. gotta love kids kids are fun yep. <clears throat> how old is he uh eight. Yep. eight yeah he created that character when he was uh five, five.
five or six. Yeah, so sure he's been in uh, three or four of the books and finally getting a cover. So, yes. Yeah, cool. my, uh, my kids created a, a character. I tweaked him and created his backstory. They created the character. Um, I passed it off to my artist at one point. I've seen pages. And that's as far as it's ever been. He's never seen publication yet. So, but. My kids made them when he when they were like, oh geez. Uh ten and twelve, maybe, I think, is when they created them. Yeah. Before my twelve year old, so yeah, I'm out there. Yeah. Uh, hit me up, we'll get it going, man. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, that's the worst part, man, is I've got um <clears throat> characters I've created. I've got I'd have to dig because I know I still have scripts. Yeah. Um I did an anthology horror book. Um, I did, uh, one called Doc Haxon and Doc Haxon is uh, Indiana Jones meets Doc Savage meets Dr. Strange. I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, and that one is my big one. I have all my, all my stuff is created in one universe, but at different times. Right. It starts out, um, pre World War II. And then they go to modern day. So from pre-World War II to now. And I I, I like it. I have I have some of the artwork for Doc Haxon literally yeah. hanging up at the shop. So get it done, get it done man. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna come up to you and I'm just gonna hand you a, like a stack of, of scripts. I'm like, here you go. Yeah. If you enjoy them, <laughs> run with them. Yeah. I mean I do edit now, so yeah. Only comics though. I'm not I'm not, I don't have the time to edit somebody's book, but I'll, I'll edit a comic for sure. Yeah. And then on top of that, I'm, I'm writing uh, two movies. So oh, nice. That takes a long time. And uh, I think one might become a series. I might try to do that as shorts, just yeah. drop it down. But, but when, like I said, I don't want to yeah. keep you any longer. It's been a blast. Um, go rest your voice, go take yeah. another nap. Uh, <laughs> I may have to do that. Uh, do you have it? Are you doing another Piqua in uh, November? That's the plan. We've just got to figure out some logistics on some stuff. That might be our first two day, and it might be the first one that that in a long time that we're gonna have to have people pay to get in okay. because we're we're legitimately looking at booking like decent sized guests for this okay. one. All right, on. Yeah. yeah, let me know and, about uh, that one when you know, because uh, I think I've got November open. I think I left yeah. it open for you guys. So yeah, yeah. That's the the plan is is that if worse comes to worse, we're just going to have another one similar to what we're having now back at the mall. Um, but the goal is to expand with this yeah. next one. Right so, on. And then if this one takes off, then we might only do the one a year, but it will be a larger one instead of two smaller ones. So okay. Yeah. Also, but like. Like I said, it's been a blast. Um, this will drop on the 5th, and I'll send it to you and give you a heads up the day it drops. So, awesome. And uh, I'll put all the links and stuff at the end of the episode and all that fun stuff. But, man, you go take care of yourself. Go relax. Yeah, yeah. And, what? What's the name of the um, character your um, uh, son created? The Chimera. Mm -hmm. What's his powers? He... My dad will tell you the one. Actually. He uh, he he can swap in and out of uh, uh, forms like um, um, he gets okay. pinned down in a cave, and basically when he erupts out of the cave, he's got giant like like uh, mole claws, so he can dig. But he's got like a shark head with a rhino horn and a big giant leatherback turtle shell, or not leatherback, but like a snapper turtle. So th everything he does is whatever he needs for the moment. His body morphs into that. Like oh, he grows cool. like a giant scorpion tail. <clears throat> he can swim because he can grow gills, stuff like that. Whatever he needs, he can use. So that's that's the he's he's uh and it's a lot of Greek mythology in there, and there's all kinds of stuff, but Chimera is the ones that my kids created. So oh. if he needs to help someone with gardening, he can turn into gardening too. <laughs> no, he would turn into a, a like a badger and dig. Yeah, there you so. go. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he, he like if he went into like combat or something like that, his skin could become like thick, like like a rhino's hide and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> yep, that's what my kids created. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 
But uh, and then I tweaked his backstory and gave him a backstory in <laughs> the whole thing. So, what's yeah. his backstory? Um, oh, yep. well, my mom's here. Yep. Take care. See you. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Take care, man. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. <laughs> later. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Meeting you.